thirty million dollars. It's now five and a half years later at six billion dollars, and they can't clean it. And that's what they're moving through. This this is not this is not light sweet crude oil going through, which will float up to the top. This is the potential, as the native tribes are saying. You poison the Missouri River at the top. Everybody downstream, which is tens of millions of people, their water is done. You can't fix it. You can't clean up diluted vitamin. They're lying to all of us. Here's what Obama should do. He should make the CEO write in blood that this is going to be light, sweet, crude oil only, and we are not connecting it to the tar sands. And they will not do that because that is exactly what it's going to do. That's all it takes. The federal government, on their permit and application to the Army Corps, it says light, sweet, crude oil. If they're not carrying light, sweet, crude, they, they, they lied on a federal document, which is also a felony. We're not standing for this anymore. Not in Pennsylvania, not in Virginia. There's four in Virginia being built right now, trying to build Atlantic Coast, Atlantic Sunrise, Mountain Valley. We're fighting those too. They're trying to frack in Maryland. Guess who worked on the team that shut that down? Guess who worked on the team that shut down the drilling in New York State? Guess who worked on the team that, sh that killed the, the Constitution Pipeline? I told the industry when I talked to them, their vice presidents, I said, you messed with the wrong Scotsman. We're uniting the clans. That means every person, from the drill site to the pipelines to the export terminals, we're all tied together. The First Nations, all of us. I have proud Scottish heritage uh, tracing back to the William Wallace legend. And I told all of these guys, you come meet me on my property with your claymore. Last man standing gets it all. That's what they won't do. They send in the bully tactics, the thugs. That's what they did to my neighbors. They threatened them. They said, if you stand in our way, we'll take you to court. It'll cost you $50,000. Do you know when these guys showed up, when the state police showed up at the property there, this is the federal marshals. A week earlier, the state police showed up. They left because the, the company could not prove that they had the right to even go on the person's property. So the state police left. They cried to the federal judge. The federal judge brought them into court with two days' notice. The family stood there shaking. They were, they, the judge asked the company, the uh, Constitution Pipeline, how much did you, money did you lose? $500,000. The judge looked at them and said, if I find you in contempt, you'll be fined $500,000 for stopping an illegal pipeline across your property. Uh, this has nothing, half a million dollars. You, he didn't find it, and they never stopped them from doing anything. They just asked a question, and that's why they left. But after that, they came and they chopped the trees down. And like I showed you before, this makes me sick, but I show everybody. Those are American flags we put on those trees, those maple trees producing sap. This is a business they did this to. And those trees are still laying there to this day. That was done over a year ago. There, That is junk. When they cut down the trees on my property to put the pipeline in, they left them there to rot. They came and they wood chipped them into my forest. This is not even, you know what the timber market did? Our timber market in Pennsylvania is done. They've cut down tens of thousands of trees and they've dumped them on the market. And my forester who used to cut our trees every three years to pay our taxes said, burn it. There's no value to the trees anymore. Cherry, cedar, oak. Burn it! No way are we doing this. Nobody even thinks about that. When you cut down millions of trees and tens of thousands of miles of pipelines, you're destroying it. And the the, the, the um, industry says it's in the way. That's why we don't. We can't afford to pick it up. We don't make any money from that. You want to know how many billions they make on this pipeline? They're not willing to share any money. I don't want their money. Neither does the native tribes. Do you know what the tribe did up in Vancouver, British Columbia? They were offered 1.2 billion to run a pipeline to an export terminal there. They had a meeting with the tribal leaders and all the nation, because that's a lot of money. They said, who's for it? Not a hand went up in the room of the First Nations. 1.2 billion they refused because they said, we can't buy back the land. We can't buy back the water. We can't buy back our grandchildren's self. It can't be purchased. It has to be protected. That's what I'm doing. We're going to stand. You couldn't offer me. They tried to buy my house. They said, we'll buy you out. How much do you want? You don't have a check account big enough to buy my property. It's been in my family for 184 years. It will die with me and go to my children. It's going to stay there. I'm proud that my children are the seventh generation. And you know in the native uh, tribe, seventh generation is what they talk about. Every generation. Even Ben Franklin. We're in Washington, D.C. Ben Franklin did a thing called the Franklin Close. You ever heard about that? You draw a line down the middle of a paper, on the left you write the positive benefits of the idea, on the right you put the negatives. If the positives outweigh the negatives, he said, that's not where you stop. You have to determine what will this look like in 25 years, 50 years, and 100 years. Ben Franklin himself said he balled up and threw in the trash can 95% of his inventions. He was the most prolific inventor of any uh, founding father of anybody in the United States. He invented everything here way back then. 
and he threw away most of invention because it didn't pass the 100-year test. These don't pass a 20-year test. When is this going to go dry? Nobody knows. They tell you there's 100 years worth of gas. No, there's not. You know why? When you drill vertically for gas and oil, the, the gas and oil comes out very slowly for 30 to 50 years. They're going dry and endemic already because when you go down a mile and a half and a mile and a half sideways, you put 50,000 pounds of pressure on it. It comes out in three to five years, 90% faster. That looks really good for investors. They have not made a dime. You ask the industry, go to API. How much money have you made fracking? Nothing, we've lost money. They'll never tell you that, but they ask any economists, they go, wait a minute, what are you talking about, lost money? Yeah, we're not working, we're not paying salaries on making money, we're paying salaries on investment. But you know when they when they started to go downhill? Just January 1st, 2014, all federal, or all um, international investment went like this. No more Russia money, no more England money, no more money from overseas. It stopped, they went, uh-oh. And then all the investment money dried right up in the U.S. And that's why they overproduce. Think of this. When you produce slowly, you can control the price. When you overproduce, just like widgets, it, now it's, what, $1.80 a thousand. It, it, it's not even worth doing. So they pulled all the rigs. All the workers are laid off. But this is America's fuel. What are you talking about? The only saving grace, they'll want to export it. Why? Once you make it an international commodity, the price goes up to 8 or $9 a thousand, just like that. Are we going to have cheap fuel? No, we have to compete with the international price. This is a, my dad called it when he died in 2007, this is a Ponzi scheme run by people who would sell their own grandmother's kidney for money. That's the way it works. So, what we're doing, standing here with these people, they're standing with us from end to end, from the, from the place they drill the hole in the ground to get the fossil fuel out, whether it's coal, oil, or gas, to the point where they steal people's land to put a pipeline, to the end where they're gonna export it, uh, we stand with, if we link all together, they can't do this because we stop the pipelines, we stop the drilling. We stop the drilling, we stop the pipelines. We stop the export, we stop everything. The industry is done for, they're on their last legs. We should all be using what the First Nations say, the sun comes up every day, the whole earth uses, there's more energy from the sun in one day than we've ever produced, as mankind has ever produced, in one day, energy. So solar, wind, geothermal, uh, um, wave, uh, wave motion, uh, capturing that. That's what we're going to run it on. My children, that are, uh, my four children and my grandchildren will not be running this planet on holes being drilled in the ground. And by the way, uh, everybody remember uh, Beverly Hillbillies? Jed was shooting at some food and up from the ground came a bubbling crude. A bullet struck the ground and the oil comes out. That's what it used to be like. I'm a California native, 46 year native. Back when they came for the gold rush, they would trip over gold nuggets the size of your fist. When those were all gone, they had to start digging. And they had to start taking mountains down. When you have to drill down a mile and a half, sideways a mile and a half, and explode the shale, the earth is done giving up the resource. Time to go to plan B, which is, uh, I don't believe we put a man on the moon in 1969 and got him them back safely, and we can't figure out how to create energy. Uh, the Hubble telescope has been up there with solar panels on it for almost 40 years, and it's still working. They work. The industry tells us the solar does not work. I say, that's funny. On every one of your pads, there's six panels because you won't run a power line because that costs $50,000. You use battery power and you transmit all your data from it from solar panel panels. So it looks like it's working pretty good over there. See, it, there's the problem. There's a disconnect. All of our politicians are bought and paid for. I always carry my money because when I have my money, when I meet with a politician, I ask them, this is $100 million of fake money. It's as fake as any promise you're being made because the industry is broke. I tell them if you go on a bus tour with them or you go up in a helicopter, wear a parachute or sit near an exit because the baby it's going off the cliff. Well, I'm not going to get caught up in that. You know why no uh, truckers were, no truckers to speak of, have converted their vehicles over to gas? They asked one question. Is the price going to go up? Because if it stays low, we're okay because I got to spend 20 grand to convert my big rig, right? But when the price goes up, even to parity with what diesel costs, they lose all that money. Um, uh, what was I thinking? The, the, they're asking.